Well, Mr. DJ back, how you doing? Count down my fancy playlist, March 18th, 1983. Let's resume the queen of disco at number 26, down from number 17. Uh, the, woman in, the Woman in Me by Donna Summer. I have to admit I was a little disappointed in that record, considering this record came after what well, should have been a hit. It was one of the most imaginative songs that Donna Summer ever did, State of Independence. Didn't make top 40 here in the states. I'll talk about the state of independence a little bit, just and just a well, just a minute. And uh, "Woman and Me" by Donna Summer is from her self-titled album called Donna Summer, which was off the Jeff and Record label. And uh, she left Casablanca in 1980, around 1980. The, the disco era was coming to an end in 1980. It had those big disco hits. There was Bad Girls, Hot Stuff, Enough Is Enough. She did that with uh, No More Tears with Barbara Streisand. That was a fabulous disco hit. And uh, she did one, oh, it was Heaven Knows, I think, in 1979. And, uh, but God, you probably forgot about this one. It was an awesome remake. You may not be a Barry Manilow fan, but you got to listen to Donna Summer's remake of uh, Could It Be Magic? Her disco, her... Can I say orgasmic? <laughs> Probably could say that on the radio, but maybe I can get away with saying orgasmic on YouTube. <laughs> she does a little bit of moaning in that record towards it, but it's a very sensual record. God, the WRMA in Montgomery played that record. That was back in the spring of 76. But now, here's what happened. In the early 80s, she leaves the Casablanca record label. The Casablanca record label more or less imploded by the early 80s. And uh, she moved on to Jeff and Records. But she kept her producers. It was Pete Ballot, Ballot B-E-L-L-O-T-E, -L -L -E, maybe it's Ballot, and Giorgio Moroder. Jo the, the legendary Giorgio Moroder who wrote the majority of her hit records. And uh, they and she continued to work with them on her first album for Jeff and Records, which was called The Wanderer. The Wanderer was a departure from her disco style. It was more of a rocking style. And Wanderer did well, and she had some follow-ups to that. I should have researched her follow-ups because there was one of them that really rocked. But the album did not do as well. David Jeffin was disappointed and the commercial performance, the chart performance of The Wanderer. Donna Summer had another album coming out, coming out on the Jeff and Record label, also produced by Giorgio Moroder and Pete Bellot, or Bellot, might be mispronouncing his last name. David Jeff said, hold it. Let's not, let's not put up, don't put out that album. Donna, Donna Summer, I'm going to hook you up with Quincy Jones. He's going to produce your next album. Quincy Jones got a track record. He's working with Michael Jackson. He's produced some hit albums. If you work with Quincy Jones, I guarantee commercial success. And there you go. Donna Summer, 1982, Love is Control. Love is in Control in the summer of 1982. And then this, gosh, dog, it's State of Independence. I was blown away by State of Independence. That was a remake. Does anybody remember State of Independence? Originally done by John Anderson and Vangelis. John Anderson of Yes teamed up with Vangelis, the Greek musician. And they had it on an album in 1981. The album was called Friends of Mr. Cairo, but it was not a hit. But Donna Summer redid it, and Quincy Jones did a bang-up production job on that. Towards the end, I mean, you heard this choir of voices pitching in. Lionel Richie sang on that record. Get this, Lionel Richie, Christopher Cross, who else? Uh, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, Brenda Russell, Stevie Wonder. That song, looking back on it, was the percussion, percussor of We Are the World, also produced by Quincy Jones. <laughs> And that was that only went as high as number forty-one here in the states. It just was not commercial enough. But it was commercial enough for the Netherlands. Went to number one in the Netherlands. State of Independence went to number fourteen in Britain as well. And we got the Woman in Me, which well it did a little bit better. Went to number thirty-three on Billboard's Hot One Hundred. Big adult contemporary hit. And uh, well, I guess that's it. All right, I'm done.
Donna Summer, number 26, The Woman and Me, on my fantasy playlist, March 18th, 1983.